Genç ve Kariyer programından hepinize merhabalar. Bu hafta da her hafta olduğu gibi çok güzel, çok değerli bir konuğumuz var. Tam 13 bin kilometre uzaklardan Kayseri'ye gelen bir konuğumuz var. Erciyes Üniversitesi'nde, Abdullah Gül Üniversitesi'nde ve Kayseri'deki diğer üniversitelerde okuyan bir sürü yabancı öğrenciden bir tanesi Daniela. Ta Peru'dan Kayseri'ye gelen bir öğrenci. Bugün onunla Kayseri'deki macerasını, eğitim sürecini, buradaki yaşantısını konuşacağız. Welcome to our program Daniela. Thank you so much. Merhaba. Benim adım Daniela. Ben 19 yaşındayım. Ben Mekatronik Mühendislik okuyorum. Erciyes Üniversitesi. Ee, <gülüyor> anladığınız üzere Daniela'nın Türkçesi birazcık az... So your uh, Turkish is not very good. Exactly, it's not that very good because you know it has like many difference between my language to Turkish language. That's evet. why it's so complicated. Peki bu uh, Türkçe niye bu kadar iyi değil diye sorduğum zaman bana söylediği şey Türkçe ve İspanyolca. Uh, Peru'da konuşulan İspanyolca buradaki dilden çok farklı. O yüzden de kendimi geliştiremedim. Şu anda da hala zorlanıyorum diyor Daniela. Okay, so we can continue in English. Okay, I will perfect. ask questions. So first, when did you come to Kayseri? İlk Kayseri'ye ne zaman geldi? The first time I came here was almost three years ago. So the first year I had opportunity to study the language here and then I started the university. Okay, mm-hmm. ilk olarak üç yıl önce Kayseri'ye gelmiş ve hemen e, Türkçe öğrenmeye başlamış. Şu anda da mekatronik mühendisliğini okuyor Erciyes Üniversitesi'nde. So this is your second year in your faculty. Exactly, it's my second year. Okay. Uh, then what can you say about your first impression? You first left Lima and came to Kayseri. What can you say about your first impression? Mm-hmm. Let me translate it. Bu arada Kayseri ilk geldiğimde ilk izlenimlerin neler olduğu Lima'dan Kayseri'ye geldikten sonra gördüklerin neler? Mm-hmm. Well, first, you know, like when I arrived here, I was so impressed about the culture and also the religion because in my country we are Catholics. So the first time I came here was in the middle of the night. So the first thing that I hear was the song that the mosque start uh, taking <laughs> zone, exactly. Yes. So I was really scared from that because I thought it was an earthquake. You know, so the first thing that I did was going outside and ask like if everything was okay. So that was my first impression, you know, because I was really scared and then, you know, uh, my ex classmates they were explaining to me about the culture, the religion, how we see it, you know. Yeah. And well about generally the country was so beautiful, you know, was really clean, you know, and also like I was really afraid, you know, to take with me my cell phone outside. Because the delinquency in Peru is too much bad, you know, it's so bad. So that's why I was so scared. But, you know, with the time, I used to take it with me and, you know, nothing happened because this is a safe country. So the first impression that I had was like it was a really safe country. And also like the people is kind of warm, you know, too. Like they were trying to help me in any place, in any yes. situation. When I was lost, I asked them and they just, you know, tried Have to help you. me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Peki Daniela aslında güzel şeylerden bahsediyor. İlk geldiğinde kendisini en çok etkileyen şey ezan sesi. Bunu çok etkilemiş. Ne olduğunu arkadaşlarına sorduğu zaman kısaca İslamiyet'ten, Müslümanlıktan bahsetmişler. Kendisini bu dini konuda bilgilendirmişler. Sonrasında tabii ki Peru ile Lima ile karşılaştırınca Kayseri çok güvenli bir şehir. Kayseri ilk geldiğimde Cep telefonumu dışarıya çıkartmaktan korkuyordum, imtina ediyordum, bundan çekiniyordum. Çünkü e, Lima'da çok fazla hırsızlık oluyor, çok fazla suç işleniyor. E, burada da elimden telefonum alınacak diye çok korkuyordum. Fakat sonrasında Kayseri'nin güvenli bir şehir olduğunu gördüm. E, i̇nsanları da çok yardımsever, çok sıcakkanlı. Ne zaman ihtiyacım olsa bana büyük bir samimiyetle yardım ediyorlar. O noktada da e, Peru ile Lima ile karşılaştırınca Kayseri'nin güvenli bir şehir olduğunu, yaşanabilir bir şehir olduğunu söyleyebilirim dedi Lima, uh, Daniela. Peki, Daniela, uh, so after your first impression, your education started in Turkish. Okay. So what can you about, uh, what can you say about this Turkish language and the differences between mm-hmm. Spanish? 
Well, you know, Spanish is kind of similar with English grammar. So that's why for me, when I was learning English, was kind of easier. But you know, when I came here, I thought because I was reading kind of like it provides to Latin too, I suppose that it would be not that hard, you know. But after like with the time uh, when I was in the class, the grammar was completely different, you know, completely different and the words too. And also because uh, you have another letters, you know, that is hard for me to pronounce it, like the vowels with the two mm -hmm. noctas, you know, because it's kind of hard for me to say it. So the first, uh, when I was learning Turkish, was so hard to speak it, you know, like when I was there with my classmate, other people could speak kind of easier and faster because they like um, spoke Arabic or other language, you know, so this kind of similar to them. But for me, it was not that same, you know. I took too much time to understand the language, you know. Imagine, like, even until now, I cannot speak that very good, you know, so it's like... But you understand everything. I understand, exactly. Okay. I understand, but it's kind of hard to speak it. Peki, Türkiye'ye geldiğinde, Kayseri'ye geldiğinde tabii ki eğitim noktasında neler yaşadığımı sordum. Türkiye'de Türkçe öğrenmeye başladı ve... Türkçe ile ilgili neler söyleyeceğini sorduğum zamansa e, İspanyolcadan tamamen farklı bir dil olduğunu belirtti. İngilizce gramerle İspanyolca gramerin birbirine yakın olduğunu ama Türkçe gramer yapısının tamamen farklı olduğunu ve devamında da e, farklı sesler olduğunu özellikle sesli harfler e, üstünde noktalama işareti olan sesli harfleri telaffuz etmekte çok zorlandığını halen günümüzde de üstünden 3 yıl geçmesine rağmen Türkçe konuşmakta zorlandığını fakat bizim Türk insanımızın çoğunun e, durumunda olduğu gibi İngilizce konuşulan bir şey anlayıp konuşamadığımız gibi e, Türkçe konuşulanları mutlaka anlıyor fakat cevap verme konusunda, konuşma konusunda birazcık sıkıntı yaşıyor. Okay, so uh, after you improve your Turkish, you meet with the people and uh, besides this, what can you say about the education system? If you compare, because I think in Lima you also went to university yes, partly, exactly. so you know the university system, education system there. Mm -hmm. So if you compare this university education system in Peru, in Lima, what can you say the main differences are? Oh. Bu arada üniversite eğitimi ile ilgili sorular sordum. Lima'da da bir süre üniversiteye gitmiş Daniela. Ee, Türkiye'deki üniversite eğitimi ile Peru, Lima'daki üniversite eğitimi farkları nelerdir? Bununla ilgili bize neler söyleyebiliriz? Well, you know, I find many differences between the education here and there. I think, you know, for example, um, in here, like the evaluations. Okay, the evaluations are totally different. Here in Turkey, the evaluation just depends about two exams mostly, the partial one and the final one. Yes. But in Peru, it's not that, you know, the evaluations are totally different. We have many quiz that for example in one subject four queer quiz so in that four quiz is one score and then you know it's like 25 percent of the evaluation and then the partial exam that is uh, like 45 percent and the final one the rest so for example if you don't like have a good result in your exams that quiz might help to you other things about the experiments, the laboratories, you know, that also like they check how was your development and according to that you can success the subject. So here in Nergis, like university is not the same, you know. That's why I think it's kind of complicated because everything is just according to one exam. So if you don't pass the exam, you fail that complete subject. So yes. that's the difference that I can find so between the education. So the evolution system is totally different. Exactly, it's totally different. Uh, peki bu üniversite eğitimi konusundaki farkları sorduğumuzda aldığımız cevap çok ilginç. Ee, özellikle değerlendirme sürecinde büyük farklılıklar olduğunu söyledi Daniela. Ee, değerlendirme sürecinin Peru'daki üniversitelerde e, quizler, laboratuvar çalışmaları ve tabii ki sınavların etkisi var fakat Diğer taraftan sınavlar düşük not aldığınız zaman kuyuzlarda ya da laboratuvar çalışmalarındaki başarınız sizin o dersi geçmenizi sağlıyor. Ama Türkiye'de sadece vize, vize ve finallerden oluşan bir geçme sistemi var, bir değerlendirme süreci var. Sınavda başarısız olduğunuz zaman tabii ki dersten kalma durumunuz oluyor. Böylesine bir farklılıktan 
bahsetti. Daniela sınav süreciyle değerlendirme ya da ders geçme yöntemiyle ilgili farklılıklar olduğunu söyledi. Besides this evolution, this marks, this uh, exams, what can you say about the campus, the life in the campus? If you compare with the life in Peru, in the university campus, the students' sociality that they do in the free time or the relationship with the scholars, what hmm. can you say about this? That's really interesting, you know. Actually, you know, I can say that in Peru is like more social. You know, for example, in your break times, you go like outside and you start discussing with your friends about the topics that you checked before or if you didn't understand something, like they will might help to you, you know, in those kind of situations. But, you know, in the university that I was studying, wasn't that big, you know, like Erges University, because the campus there is really, really big, you know, it's really immense, Erges University. So, like, you can uh, walk around the campus, and, you know, so you can enjoy maybe the season, you know, like yeah. we are. So. It's kind of cute in that way, you know, but in the other university, it's not that the, Big, the same yeah. exactly. So, for example, if you want to um, talk with your friends, you might not find a place to, you know, so you need to go outside of the campus mm -hmm. to try to discuss something with your friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the biggest advantage is the campus of the RGS University. Exactly, that dimension. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, peki, kampüs hayatı, üniversite hayatı konusunda neler söyleyebilirsin? Farklılıkları noktasında dediğimde, tabii sosyallik noktasında biraz daha Pirilik Üniversitesi'nin sosyal olduğunu. Fakat diğer taraftan da RGS Üniversitesi'nin muazzam büyüklükte güzel bir kampüsü olduğunu Kampüste vakit geçirmeye de keyifli olduğunu, kampüsün içerisinde arkadaşlarıyla buluşup vakit geçirebileceği yerler olduğunu bahsetti. Diğer üniversitelerde maalesef bu fırsat bulma şansları yok. Çünkü üniversitelerin böyle alanları olmadığı için ya da vakit geçirecek alanları olmadığı için üniversitenin dışında öğrenciler vakit geçirmeye çalışıyorlar. So, what can you say about the life in Kayseri? How do you spend your daily life here? Well, daily schedule. Uh, mostly, for example, I go to the university, you know, to study or to do some activities because, you know, like Turkish language is hard for me. So what I do is like translate all the classes into my language. You know, mm. that's why I approach my time to do that. You know, like I need to do all the class again, but in my own language. So yes. that's why I go to the university in my free time, you know, to study or I'm at home, you know, studying to other things that I do, for example, is walk around my Turkish friends so I maybe can improve my Turkish too. Yeah. And, you know, other thing about Kayseri, what I like is to ride bicycle. Because here, for example, uh, the, um, there is n not too much traffic, you know. In Peru, the traffic is too much crazy. Like, yes. you cannot even walk, you know. Like, if you want to cross, you know. You need to it's be really careful. <laughs> yeah, dangerous. Though. Yes, too much dangerous. And the people don't respect the traffic lights, for example. Yes. They just go like crazy, you know, and you just can die any moment. But okay. here, you know, uh, what I do is ride a bicycle like many times. Because you know? it's a flat city. Exactly. Not, it's a quiet. No hills. Yeah, mm -hmm. quiet. Okay, peki. Kampüs dışındaki yaşamı hakkında sorular sordum. Günlük hayatın nasıl geçiyor diye sorduğum zaman... Günün büyük bir kısmını tabii ki üniversitede dersleriyle geçiriyor. Bir de e, Daniela'yı diğer öğrencilerden tabii bu işte zorlayan kısım e, kendi diline çeviriyor. Yani bütün o gördükleri derslerin tamamını e, İspanyolcuya çevirmekle vakit geçiriyor. Evde de ders çalışmakla vakit geçiriyor. Bunun dışında en fazla keyif aldığım şey Kayseri'de bisiklet sürmekten hoşlandığından bahsetti. Aslında burada yine Kayseri ile ilgili güzel övgü dolu sözleri var. Çünkü Lima'da trafik kurallarına e, sürücülerin çok uymadığını, aşırı fazla trafik olduğunu, hatta yolda yürümenin bile zor olduğunu söyledi. Kayseri'de e, trafik kurallarına e, yine hani Peru'yla karşılaştırdığımızda daha fazla uyulduğunu ve bisiklet sürmenin de hani düz bir şehir olmasından dolayı keyifli olduğunu söyledi Daniela bize. Okay Daniela, uh, besides these things and uh, you uh, meet with your friends. So do you have any favorite place to visit in Kaiser? And usually where do you go? Do you like Talas or the city center? Where do you enjoy the most? I like Or the, the most. Daniela, yeah? 
arkadaşlarıyla buluştuğunda nerede vakit geçirmekten hoşlandığını sordum. <gülüyor> Talas'ta mı yoksa şehir içinde, şehir merkezinde bir yerlerde mi vakit geçiriyorlar? I like the most Dallas, you know, because the coffee, like the coffee centers. For example, uh, you cannot find that much coffee center in my country. You need to go to one place in a specific and just find one, you know, and that's yes. all. So here, you know, the first also one thing that I was really impressive was about that coffee centers, you know, because I was walking, I found one. I walk a little bit more, I found another one. So it's like here in the city, you have many, so and it's kind of cute and nice because you can go with your friends, you can sit down, you can talk, you can drink something, you can pass your time like that. So that's why I really enjoy to go to that uh, Talas place because I think there are more varieties of yes. coffee centers. And uh, how many of them did you discover? How many of them? Oh, uh, like more than 30, I mean. More than 30 yeah. coffee shops, that's great. Peki, Daniela nerede vakit geçiriyorsun diye sordum. O tabii ki Talas'ta vakit geçirmekten keyif aldığını söyledi. Peru ile karşılaştırdığında Peru'da bu kadar kafelerin yoğun olduğu mekanların çok da bulunmadığını, bir kafenin bulunduğunu ve diğer bir kafeye gitmek için de uzun mesafeler kat etmeniz gerektiğini bahsetti. Ama Talas'ın en sevdiği yönü ise birbiri ardına bir sürü kafe olduğunu ve şu ana kadar da tam 30 tane farklı kafenin e, müşterisi olarak orada yer aldığından bahsetti. Hmm. That's really nice. So what can you say about the differences between the Turkish cuisine and your Peru cuisine? Bu arada çok önemli bir soru daha soruyorum tabii ki Daniela. Türk mutfağıyla Peru mutfağını karşılaştırınca neler söyleyebiliriz? Well, you know, we have like the difference is really not easy, you know. Like in my country we have our own spices our own like you know own ingredients for example we use ajinomoto that is a special ingredient for example that you add to kind of all your foods that it that gives a different taste you know and also like we used to eat too much like like fish you know because we are close mm. to the sea that's Ocean, why actually. exactly yeah. so that's the why Pacific we Ocean. exactly Pacific yes. Ocean so that's why we used to eat many things, you know, related to the sea, you know. And also, like, we have, uh, like, crema la mancaina, that is a really nice dish for us. Like, it's a yellow cream, you know, that we use many potatoes. Like, you know, our food is really diversity because we have more than 2,200 types of potatoes. Oh, really? Exactly. 2,200 Two different. More than that. So wow. that's why, for example, you can find many types of food because every potato changes the taste. We of have course. a black potato, pink potato, white potato. Um, oh, we have many, you know, many, many. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why food is really good. Here, you know, also I like the food and the first time, you know, for example, I try chick of the. I didn't know what was it, you know, the first time, but my friends invited me to eat that food and I really like it, you know, and I was reading about the food. Also, the mayonnaise like, is really good. Like, I can say also that Turkish food is really nice, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Peki Daniela'nın tabii ki 13.000 km uzaktan gelmesinden dolayı tamamen kültür farklılığı, yabancı dil, aynı zamanda yemek konusunda da tabii büyük farklılıklar var. Geldiği ülke Lima, büyük okyanus kıyısında, Pasifik kıyısında bir şehir ve tabii ki yiyecekler de çoğunlukla deniz ürünü ağırlıklı. Bundan dolayı da Kayseri'ye geldiğinde bu konuda tabii farklılıkları yaşamış. Bir de ilginç bir şey daha söyledi. Peru'da 2200 farklı çeşit patates bulunduğunu, patatesin de yiyeceklerde çok fazlasıyla kullanıldığını ve her farklı patatesin farklı bir lezzeti olduğunu, bunda yemeklere farklı bir lezzet kattığından bahsetti. Aynı zamanda tabi Peru'da kullanılan, bizim Türkiye'de olmayan farklı baharatlardan da yemeklerde bol miktarda kullanıldığını, bunların hepsinin de yine yemeklere farklı bir tat, farklı bir lezzet verdiğinden bahsetti. Türkiye'ye ilk geldiğinde ise tabii ki arkadaşları onu çiğ köfte yemeye götürmüşler ve bunun ne olduğunu ilk kez burada tatmış ve çok sevmiş. Sonrasında tabii ki lahmacun ve diğer Kayseri yemeklerini de beğendiğini söyledi. So, you also like Kayseri cuisine, the mantı, and yalama, and sucuk, I don't know. 
Did you try them? Yeah, I tried them and I really like it, you know. So I really can say that I really like Turkish, like food. Like when I came here, I was kind of scared, you know, because the food. Like, I mean, uh, I had like other bad experience with the food in another country. Yes. So I didn't like it too much, you know, and I was thinking maybe it must be the same. But no, I was totally wrong, you know, like the food here is really nice. So I'm not struggling in that point. Okay. You know? Peki Türkiye'ye ilk geldiğimde buradaki yemekler konusunda birazcık endişeliydim ama tabii ki çok sevdiğim Türk yemeklerinden de aşırı memnunum diyor Daniela. So the last time uh, you went to Peru, when did you go there? I went to Peru in the last holidays. In the summer holidays. Exactly. Burada Peru'ya en son ne zaman gittin diye sorduğumda son e, giriş tarihi yaz tatilinde olduğunu belirtiyor. But it was was it summer in Peru? No, in Peru was winter. Fakat tabi yaz tatilinde Peru'ya gitti ama tabi bu arada Peru'da mevsim kıştı maalesef çünkü e, güney yarım kürede olmasından dolayı ülkesi farklı bir iklime gidiyor. E, Türkiye'de yaz dönemi yaşadığımızda ya da yaz mevsimini yaşadığımızda Peru'da kış mevsimi yaşanıyor. So you went to Peru and it was Winter and how yes, was the was winter? winter? Like you know, the weather in Peru is kind of crazy because like sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot. Like you never know what like will happen with the what weather. What expect? Exactly. But does it snow there? No. It doesn't snow in, in Lima. That's in snow. So, so since uh, you come to Kaiser, you didn't see any. Exactly. Here in Kaiser was the first time I mm. saw the snow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also. Um, well, in Peru, like for example about the weather, uh, for the umiti, you know, mm. like it's more cold, it's colder, you know, that's why. So the, the region, different Ex region. Exactly. And the uh, mountain range, I think. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, peki. Bu arada Lima'da kar yağıyor mu diye sorduğumda Lima'da hiç kar yağmadığından, hayatında ilk kez karı Kayseri'de gördüğünden bahsetti. Bu arada tabii ki Peru'nun dağlık bölgelerinde kar olduğunu, oralarında daha soğuk olduğunu belirtti bize. So, uh, how did you decide to study university in Turkey and how did you come up with the idea of RGS University? Bu arada tabii ki Türkiye'ye gelmeye nasıl karar verdin ve üniversiteyi RGS Üniversitesi'nde okumaya nasıl karar verdin diye sordum. Well, it was kind of crazy, you know, because I was studying uh, in Peru, in a university. I was in the second year, kind of. So like I wasn't, I didn't have the idea to come to another country. So, but you know, there other countries start to calling me because I studied the international baccalaureate. Mm -hmm. uh, so for that reason, they had all my information studies. So after that, they start calling me like China, Turkey, you know. But I didn't accept China because at that moment I didn't have the necessary records, like money, you know, to pay that ticket, for example. To go to China. To go to China. Because they offer me a scholarship mm -hmm. too. But in Turkey, you know, like also they call to me and they like offer me a scholarship. And like, you know, they, they offer me also that ticket. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking so much about that. You know, I was researching also, you know, because I put mechatronics, you know, and I thought like, you know, it will be a good experience if I go abroad, if I discover something new, you know, if I see is uh, like a different whole completely different world you know because here like it's really far away from my country so i was like thinking maybe if i discovered this maybe if i had new experience if i met new people if i learn about the culture religion it will be really interesting so i took the decision to come here and kaiseri like they offered me Kayseri because they had mechatronics engineering at their university. So I was looking for that. I was researching about the university. And, you know, I was looking out that the university has many good research uh, investigations, you know, so it's... You chose because of that reason. Exactly. And uh, is it the Turkey Bursları? Yes, okay. it is. Bu arada Daniela Peru'da çok başarılı bir öğrenci ve uluslararası alanda da birçok burs kazanmış bir öğrenci. Çin'den de burs teklifi almış, Türkiye'den de burs teklifi almış. Fakat Çin'deki üniversite oradaki öğrenimini karşılayacak bursu vermiş. 
ve uçak biletini karşılayabileceğini söyleyememiş. Türkiye bursları ise hem uçak biletini hem buradaki eğitimini karşılamak üzere burs teklifinde bulunmuş. Daniela da bu teklifi kabul ederek Türkiye'ye gelmiş. Mekatronik mühendisliği okumak istediği için de Erciyes Üniversitesi Kayseri'ye gelme fırsatı bulmuş. So, before you come, uh, what was in your mind and uh, what kind of uh, differences did you come across? Well, you know, I was... Yani Türkiye'ye gelmeden önce aklında neler geçiyordu Türkiye ile ilgili ve buraya geldikten sonra ne farklılıklar gördün? Like, you know, I was thinking first of all about the people. You know, the people like in my country is really hot, like, you know, really warm, like they are so happy, they are dancing like in the street, you know, they are like crazy people, but at the same time, good people, you know, so that's why in Latin America, like if you listen that word, like you will realize, oh, Latin America, so they like to dance, they like the music, like that, like, they like to live the life how it comes right and that's true and when i came here you know so i was like thinking maybe i don't know how the people will be you know if they will be kind of the same if they will be kind of discreet you know so when i came here i realized like you know of course the people is not same you know it's not the same but you know they were good you know because at the first time they were trying to help me and somehow like i didn't understand what i needed to do you know at that point it's good But of course, like, I cannot compare the people from Peru to Kai City in that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you uh, find them also, of course, warm? Yeah, yeah of helpful. course. But mostly, you know, the people here, I cannot say they are too much warm, you know? Yes. So, exactly. But in Peru, the people are warmer. Mm, yes. Really? A okay. lot, yes. <laughs> okay. Bu arada, gelmen önce neler bekliyordun, neler umuyordun diye sorduğum zaman, İnsanlar yönünden tabii ki farklılıklar olacağını bekliyordum. Peru'da insanlar daha mutlu, insanlar yollarda eğleniyorlar, çok sıcakkanlılar. Ee, Türkiye'ye geldiğimde de nasıl insanlarla karşılaşacağım konusunda açıkçası kafamda soru işaretleri vardı. Ama buradaki insanların da Peru'dakiler kadar olmasa da sıcakkanlı ve yardımsever olduklarını gördüm diyor Daniela. Okay then. And what is the biggest challenge to live abroad and study in a different country? The biggest challenge? Biggest challenge, of course, the language barrier, and mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure there are some other things. Bu arada Daniela'ya yurt dışında okumanın en büyük zorlukları nelerdir? Ya da yurt dışında yaşamanın ve okumanın en büyük zorlukları nelerdir diye sordum. Like, first of all, you know, I think the biggest challenge is be far away, really far away from your family. You know, yeah. because, of course, in certain time, you are used to live with them, you know. Like, you have, like, someone who cares about you, someone who cooks to you, you know. Someone who, for example, if you need something, they will be for you. But yes. in that case, you know, when you go abroad, you don't have your family with you. So it's like you need to learn for yourself like how to kind of survive you know mm. like uh, if you are hungry you must find your own food if you need to study you need to do your own uh, schedule you know yeah. also like uh, for those kind of things you know that's why my biggest challenge but you know i was kind of used to because i didn't live with my family for almost three years because i was studying in in an internship so at that point i could adapt easily you know mm. But for, I think, foreign people, you know, who come abroad, the biggest challenge, I think, is that, you know, it's really hard for them, for us, you know, to be to away from there. Away from Exactly. Family. Mostly, uh, for example, I know their friends, you know, that they left many scholarships because of that, you know, because yes. they couldn't be really far away from them. Mm -hmm. Okay, peki. Tabii ki bu kadar uzakta eğitim görmenin en büyük zorluğu aileden uzakta olmak. Çünkü... Aileniz sizin çocukluğunuzdan beri her şeyinizle ilgileniyor, size değer veriyor, sizin yerinize yemek yapıyor, bir sürü konuda desteklerini sunuyor. Aileden uzak olmak o birazcık bizi yoruyor ve açıkçası bunu üstesinden kolay bir şekilde gelmemenin en büyük sebebi Türkiye'ye gelmeden önce de 3 yıl boyunca burslu şekilde ailemden uzakta eğitim almış olmam. Bunu kolay bir şekilde atlattım. Fakat birçok arkadaşım ailelerinden uzak olmayı 
atlatamadığı için, kendi başlarına kalma konusunda zorlandıkları için burslarını iptal ederek kendi ülkelerine geri döndüler dedi Daniela. Bu konuda da onu takdir ediyoruz. We appreciate your uh, effort to live by yourself in a different country with those old challenges. Yeah, And, that's true. Uh, What can you say about the challenge that you come across in the university education? Because you uh, are a student whose uh, mother tongue is Spanish, but there are many students Turkish and their classes are in Turkish. And this is a big challenge. And besides this, what kind of other challenges can you talk about? Bu arada eğitimle ilgili nelerden bahsedebilirsin? Ana dilin İspanyolca. Burada bütün dersler Türkçe ve bir sürü Tabii ki ana dili Türkçe olan öğrenci var. Sen e, tabii ki dilin yanı sıra hangi zorluklarla karşılaşıyorsun üniversite eğitiminde? You know, in the university, yeah, that's true. You know, the language is a big challenge. You know, when I'm, for example, in a class, there are many things maybe I don't understand. You know, because they use an academic words. So it's like I'm, I was not studying that when I was in Ersin. Mm -hmm. So I was just, you know, studying the street words, for example, yes. that I use outside, you know. Daily. Daily exactly, tours. exactly. So when I went to university, for me the first years, the first year war was so hard, you know, so complicated. Because when I went to the class, like maybe I didn't understand anything what the teacher said. So I needed just to study for myself, you know. And yes. that's why when I entered the exam, I used to study for what I learned, not for what the teachers say. Okay, okay. so that first step was that. You know, so also I think a challenge that I had was to make friends at that time, you know, because I couldn't uh, speak with them. Like I just was sit down in the class and when it finished, immediately I just left to my house, you know, okay. because I didn't want to talk in Turkish at the time. It was not that comfortable talking in Turkish, you know, but with time, I was like, I'm, I just try to speak with them, you know, try to talk to them. But of course, until now, it's kind of complicated also, you know, to talk to them. So, like, I cannot say that I have many friends in the university, you know. So Still you don't have? I have friends, but not that much. Getting you know? more yes, and more exactly. each year. Maybe this year you will improve exactly. your I really friendship hope so. with the Turkish people. Exactly. I'm sure. Okay. Tabii ki dersler konusunda büyük zorluk yaşadığından bahsetti Daniela. Bütün dersler Türkçe. Dersler sırasında hocalarımız akademik dil kullanıyor. Biz Ersem'de, Türkçe öğretilen merkezde günlük Türkçeyi öğrendik. Günlük hayatta kullanabileceğimiz Türkçeyi öğrendik. Ama üniversitede akademik Türkçe, akademik dil kullanılıyor. Bu yüzden de bazı dersleri anlama konusunda tabii ki sıkıntılar yaşadım. İkincisi tabii ki Arkadaş edinme konusunda zorlandım. Hemen ders biter bitmez yurduma ya da evime gidiyordum ders çalışmaya. Fazlasıyla Türkçe konuşmakta zorlandığım için de vakit kaybetmek istemiyordum. Doğrudan kendimi kapatıyordum. Bu da birazcık arkadaş edinme konusunda sıkıntı yaşamama sebep oldu diyor Daniela. Ama bu sene 3. senesi umarım ilerleyen zamanda daha fazla Kayseri'de Türkiye'de yeni arkadaşlar edinir. Okay, so uh, what can you say about the main differences that you can see in the people's life? As you mentioned before, uh, people in Peru, they are more happy, but what can you say about the main differences? What can you see the biggest differences are? Like mostly, you know, I think that Turkish people, they are really stressed for everything, you know, like they have many stress and they don't relax themselves, you know, they are just thinking, thinking. You know, so in Peru it's not that, you know, for example, if someone has a problem, like that person won't see that problem, you know, it's just, okay, whatever can happen is just going on, you know, like I would just live with flow, kind of like that, you know, yes. so that's why the people there is happy, really happy, like they don't take seriously their problems, you know. So they in don't. South America, this is the tradition, maybe. Exactly. It's Can we say like this? Exactly. I, th yes. I think so. Yeah, you know, they are like that. Even I can include me, myself. You know, sometimes, you know, I have a problem and I don't take it that seriously, you know. I'm trying to be relaxed and, you know, try to continue. Like, you okay. know. Peki, genel olarak Türk insanıyla Peru insanı arasında neler farklı? Farklı olarak neler söyleyebilirsin diye sorduğum zaman... Peru insanının Türk insanına göre daha rahat olduğunu, problemleri Türkler kadar ciddiye almadığını, Türklerin 
fazlasıyla düşündüklerini söyledi bize. Diğer taraftan kendisi de bir Güney Amerikalı olarak bir sürü problemle karşılaşıyoruz ama bunları Türkler kadar sürekli kafamızda kurmuyoruz. Düşünme durumumuz olmuyor dedi Daniela. Okay, besides this, uh, what can you say about the uh, desserts, the patisserie? Uh, what kind of desserts do you have in Peru? And of course in Turkey, you know baklava and other desserts are very famous. So before you come here, did you have any chance to try these? Or did you have any idea what they are? And what kind of dessert do you have in Peru cuisine? Mm, okay. Actually, when I didn't try any dessert until I came here, well, in Kayseri. Mm -hmm. In Peru, we have uh, many desserts, you know, like mazamorra or picarones. You know, that, like, for, for example, the picarones are uh, made with many ingredients and it's really complicated to do. Like, you need to uh, spend almost one complete day to make it. One complete day. One complete day to make it. You know, like you need many ingredients, like really a lot of passion too, you know. But it's really sweet, you know, the desserts there are too much sweet. Here, you know, I had the opportunity to try some desserts like baklava that I really, really like it, you know, because it's really sweet, you know, and it's so nice, you know. So it's the, um, the favorite dessert that I ever tried in Kayseri, you know, well, in Turkey, I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Türkiye'deki tatlılarla Peru'daki tatlılar, yemek e, kültürü açısından ne farklılıklar var diye sorduğum zaman tabii ki Türkiye'deki tatlıları Peru'da tatma şansı olmamış. Peru e, mutfağında farklı tatlılar olduğunu, hatta bir gününüzü harcamanız gereken ve yapımı gerçekten zor ve içeriği de çok karmaşık olan tatlardan bahsetti Daniela. Ama Türkiye'ye geldikten sonra baklavayı ve Türk tatlılarında en az Peru'dakiler kadar beğendiğini, çok lezzetli bulduğunu belirtti. Okay, besides this, Daniela, I also want to ask you, what do you think about the main differences that you see after two years you stay in Turkey, you left your country and after two years you had this chance to go back were there any changes in Lima after uh, these two years? And did you have difficulty to speak Spanish as fluent as you you were speaking before? Bu arada e, Daniela Lima'ya iki yıl boyunca hiç gitmedi. Ailesini görme fırsatı olmadı. İlk kez bu yaz gitme şansı buldu. Bu arada Lima'da neler farklıydı, neler değişmişti? Ve İspanyol can biraz gerilemiş miydi? Eskisi kadar hızlıca konuşabildin mi bunu sordum. Well, you know, of course it was kind of hard, you know, when I went back to my country like to speak Spanish again, it was kind of complicated because I was like, you know, turning sometimes to Turkish, turning sometimes to English, you know, because with my sister we used to speak just in English and with my parents we speak in Spanish. Yes. So it's kind of really complicated, you know, to speak that fluent in Spanish again. Like when I went there, you know, and I was going out with my friends, like they were telling me, Daniela, what are you saying? Even I was like inventing new words, you know, because yes. my brain was like, you know, really confusing. It was confused all the words. And, you know, about the country, you know, I cannot say that I saw many difference because, you know, in my country, it's really hard to see a progress, you know, really hard. For example, if something is uh, break, okay, they will take like one year or two years to repair it so that's like for example here like it's really different you know like that uh, that constructions and if you want to do a new tram by a train you know yeah. it's so fast you know yeah, but in it's peru it's not that the same it's in, not the same yeah, even yeah, in two after two months even you can see lots of changes exactly there. you cannot <laughs> but in peru you cannot you cannot see anything you okay. know so that's the sad part, you know, I think, or well, in Latin America generally, you know, because even in Colombia, in Venezuela, you know, those countries are not that good. Yeah, in the that construction way. is very slow. Exactly. So if there is anything broken, you have to wait long, long days, time. long, long years. <laughs> yes. Okay. Peki. Uh, Daniela, tabii ki iki yıl aradan sonra tekrar gittiğinde konuşma konusunda zorlandın mı diye sordum. Kendisi 
bayağı zorlandığından bahsetti. Çünkü zihinsel olarak hem Türkçe'ye hem İngilizce'ye hem İspanyolcaya kaydını bazen arkadaşlarıyla dışarıya çıktığında bir şeyler konuştuğunda sen ne diyorsun, ne demek istiyorsun dedikleriyle karşılaştığını söyledi. Aynı zamanda kardeşiyle birlikte İngilizce konuştuklarını, annesiyle babasıyla İspanyolca konuştuğunda bunların da tabii ki dil becerisinde bazen karmaşaya sebep olduğunu söyledi Daniela. Peki farklılık olarak neler gördün? İki yıl boyunca Türkiye'deydin. Tekrar gittiğinde değişen neler vardı diye sorduğumda bana kısaca Güney Amerika Türkiye gibi değil. Güney Amerika'da işler birazcık yavaş yürüyor. Kırılan, dökülen ya da yolda bozulan bir şey olduğunda onun tamir edilmesi yıllar sürüyor. Türkiye'de ise bir geldim yeni tramvay hattı olmuş. İki ay Kayseri'de yoktu. Her şey değişmiş dedi. Yani Kayseri'de Türkiye'de belediyeciliğin, büyükşehir'in çalışmalarının ne kadar hızlı olduğunu görmüş oluyoruz. Buradaki farklılıkları da kendisinin ağzından duymuş oluyoruz. Bu da bizi tabii ki mutlu ediyor. Çünkü kısaca Kolombiya'da, Venezuela'da, Güney Amerika'nın birçok ülkesinde de durumun buna benzer olduğunu belirtti Daniela. So we are at the end of the program. It was very quick. Yeah, it is. It was yeah, very quick. Yeah, 45 minutes you know? fast, very fast and... Uh, what can you say at last about uh, people in Kayseri? Well, Peki Kayseri insanlarına son kez <gülüyor> programımızın sonunda neler söylemek istersin? You know, I'm really grateful with like you know Kayseri people because they were like you know really helpful. Like when I came here first time, I was really scared. I was so young. I was just yeah, 17 years old. You know, so it's like was like. Okay, these people is cute. They were trying to help me with the people that I had the opportunity mm-hmm. to live with. They were so nice. They were understand, you know, my situation because I couldn't speak Turkish, you know, at that yes. way. And I couldn't understand any word, you know, at that time. Even me, I didn't know, you know. So, like the people, like were really comprehensive, you know. So I'm really grateful for all of them, you know. And also to come here to Turkey because it's such a beautiful country, you know that has a different culture, different everything, you know, so I could acquire knowledge from that time. So I just need to say thank you to all of you guys. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Peki, gayet güzel sözlerle bitirdi Daniela. Kayseri'ye ilk geldiğimde 17 yaşındaydım. Korkuyordum yabancı bir ülkede, yabancı bir şehirde olmaktan ama burada Kayseri insanları bizi rahat ettiriyor. Burada mı olmaktan mutluyuz. Burada evimizde gibiyiz. Buradaki insanlara, Kayseri halkına misafirperverliklerinden dolayı, yardımseverliklerinden dolayı da bir kez daha teşekkür ediyor kendisi. Sevgili dostlar, bir programın daha sonuna geldik. Haftaya yine değerli konuklarımızla sizlerle birlikte olacağız. Haftaya görüşene kadar esen kalın, hoşçakalın.